Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be doing a comparison between two epic minimal travel bags, the Patagonia Mini MLC and the Air Travel Pack 3 Small. Both of these are some of my all-time favorites. I've featured them in a ton of different videos. I've taken them on numerous trips over the past year or two. I reference them a lot because of their well-rounded feature set. They're just useful for so many different situations. They have all of the things that I'm normally looking for out of this style of bag. So either one is gonna be a fantastic option to go with, but there are gonna be some similarities and differences that you'll wanna keep in mind depending on your particular needs. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. Before doing so, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the overall aesthetic, both of these have a pretty minimal appearance, but the style is a little bit different. The Air Travel Pack 3 has a more modern, techy style, whereas the Mini MLC feels a little more subdued, slightly more functional and outdoorsy, but not overwhelmingly so. Both of them feel like they're gonna blend in well to a lot of different environments. The Travel Pack 3 Small, to me, feels like it might stand out a little bit more. It just looks a little bit more flashy, but the Patagonia bag, as I always have to call out with this one, has the big logo on the front, super prominent. Definitely hope in some future version of the bag they have something a little more subtle. With the black version of the Mini MLC, you know, it's something that I find manageable and the rest of the bag is so good that it, it doesn't really bother me that much, but I know a lot of people don't like that large logo, whereas Air's branding is definitely more subtle than that. And then as far as the materials, both bags feel really solid in the build. I have to give an edge here to Air with the 1680D ballistic nylon that they offer. It just feels a little bit more rugged and premium. And you know, this is a material I've used across a number of years in many of their bags. It's always held up well, offers a nice amount of weather resistance. And you know, it's just a really great fabric. The travel pack is also offered in X-Pack. Beyond that, you have a really nice YKK zippers all throughout. Some of them are aqua guarded in key areas. And then the mini MLC uses a recycled nylon fabric that has also held up very well across a number of trips. It's got this kind of ripstop patterning. It also provides decent weather resistance. They have, you know, the very rugged, chunky YKK zipper on the main compartment, YKK zippers throughout. So it still feels like it has a solid build quality. The materials just don't feel quite as premium as the air materials. However, with the Patagonia bag, it does feel like the, the structure is a little more flexible and slightly lighter. So that is something that I have found to be advantageous, particularly for travel, where you're trying to take full advantage of the space that the bag offers, or you're trying to squeeze it into a tighter overhead space or under the seat. I always appreciate the flexibility of these materials. So it kind of depends on what you're looking to prioritize, but Regardless, both of them have held up well as I've had them over the past year or two. And then continuing along the exterior, nice amount of functionality on both of them. Each has one water bottle pocket on the side. I like the you know simplicity of the Patagonia water bottle pocket here. Nice elastic mesh that you know kind of hugs the bag when it's not in use. It can still hold a good sized water bottle, so it expands outwardly. So even a 26 ounce Yeti Rambler, I like that it's a pretty tall compartment as well. Whereas, you know, Air has their typical sort of zippered water bottle pocket, which also gets the job done. Can be a little shallow, can sometimes feel like the water bottle wants to slide out. But, you know, even with the 26 ounce here, it fits in there when I'm on the go. It's able to hold whatever I need. Sometimes I use it for an umbrella. And then I've always liked that it has this ability to zip closed when it's not in use. So both of them have just the singular water bottle pocket. And then as far as handles, both have, you know, pretty nice top handle. Air, of course, just always does a great job with including these really premium seat belt like handles across the top. You have one on the side that's not quite as thick, but still you know, offers a nice amount of padding, it's comfortable. And then you have one additional handle on the bottom that has kind of a simpler material here, but still feels durable. I like that it's not as thick. 
And then for the Mini MLC, you have the handle at the top. It's got a nice durable nylon feeling here. Nothing crazy as far as padding, but still very easy to get your hand in and out. And then you have a nice large handle on the side if you wanna carry this like a briefcase. And you have some webbing and attachment points with the MLC on both sides. So great for clipping on additional accessories with the carabiner. On the front, you have just a couple of loops that you can pair with some third-party straps. I've used that to attach tripods, yoga mats, jackets, even a skateboard. And I like that it's not super prominent or doesn't make the bag feel overly technical. You don't have rows of webbing, just a couple of you know loops on the corner. So I think that does a good job of striking a balance there as far as how much functionality to offer. On air side, you have compression straps, two on each side, and a really great implementation here. I like that you have you know the magnetic buckles, make it easy to quickly release, access whatever you need to, and then the placement of these is also nice because you can still compress the bag down when it's not as full or just kind of tighten everything up. You can still use it to hold a jacket or a tripod, but it does not impede you from opening the main compartment, which can be a you know challenge with some compression straps. So really great, just well thought out design there. And yeah, both of them offer a nice, nice amount of functionality. You also have an additional D-ring on the Travel Pack 3. And then while we're talking about the exterior, one additional note is how well the bags stand up on their own. Always a key feature, particularly when I'm traveling, I always place these down next to me when I'm waiting for to board my flight, just sitting near the gate. So great to see that both of them can do this pretty consistently, as always with many of these, especially given the more flexible nature of the MLC, depending on how things are loaded out, you know, it can shift a little bit, but for the most part, it's worked pretty consistently on both bags, which has been super helpful. And then moving into the capacity, both of these come in at a really great minimal travel bag size. The Air Travel Pack 3 Small comes in at about 28 liters, whereas the Mini MLC is gonna come in at around 30. So a little bit more space with the Mini MLC. Also, because it has a little bit of a simpler layout, it just provides that extra bit of flexibility. I always feel like I can squeeze in a little bit more in these style of bags but both of them are able to hold kind of my typical loadouts for minimal travel. They're a little bit on the larger side, maybe for some people as an everyday carry bag, but they can still work well in that instance. And I like that even when they're loaded out for both of these, they never feel overwhelmingly big. I've been able to use both of them as a personal item on a variety of domestic and international airlines. I've been able to place them under the seat in front of me. So, you know, they're not super bulky. They are, you know, are gonna be able to work well for those use cases, but still be usable as an everyday carry bag if I don't wanna take an extra one with me for a particular trip. Taking a look at the harness system, so far both bags have been really comfortable to wear. They are pretty different. From purely a comfort standpoint, I would say the Air has a big advantage here. Air's harnesses are always some of the best on the market. Just really beefy padding that's really soft, comfortable. It feels very premium on the inside. You have the really nice air mesh to help prevent moisture from building up. And then you have load lifters, even on the Travel Pack 3 Small, which I don't tend to like as much, but I know some people like to have them. You also have a D-ring on the strap, a couple of attachment points to hang your sunglasses or clip-on accessories, and then a nice sternum strap with a magnetic buckle. And the Patagonia bag, again, the straps here are not gonna be as robust, but there's also different use cases. You know, they get the job done, even though they're not gonna be quite as comfortable in my opinion, they still have a good amount of breathability. But then where they do have a little bit of an advantage is the fact that you can actually hide these away. So if you want to just store them when you're traveling to prevent them from getting snagged on anything, or if you wanna use this as a shoulder bag, that's one of the cool things about the Mini MLC is this convertible bag and includes a shoulder strap if you wanna use it as such. And that also works as a waist belt. So dual purpose there, which I've always thought is a really cool feature. And then if you are using it as a backpack, you can put the waist belt on, have some additional support. You do have the ability to add a waist belt on Air's bag, but it's just not included. So nice little bonus there. As far as the back paneling, kind of the same thing here where the Travel Pack 3 Small is gonna have more robust padding, just more comfortable. This is one of my favorite styles of back panels in general, so good amount of breathability, elevated to give you ventilation while you're walking around. 
kind of similar style here on the Mini MLC, but the padding's just not as thick. So good amount of breathability, a little bit of elevation. Both of them are gonna have a luggage passenger to allow you to rest them on a suitcase while traveling. So nice thing to have if you're pairing it with an additional piece of luggage. Jumping into the organizational options, both of these have a nice variety of pockets all throughout. I would say that the Travel Pack 3 Small just has more organization in general. And so diving in on the quick access front, the Travel Pack has this zippered pocket on the front. Pretty simple, it's gonna offer a good amount of space for cables, snacks, or anything that you're grabbing more regularly. You have a little lanyard with a nice clip for your keys while you're on the go. And then on the side, you also have another quick access pocket near the handle. So additional space for your phone, your headphones, any documentation you're grabbing more regularly. So some extra options there. Both of them have a top quick access pocket, which is a really critical feature on a travel bag for me. When I'm placing the bag down next to me, this is always super useful or for just tossing some things in for TSA. So really nice amount of space on both of them. Uh, you know, which is one of the most important things is to just have volume to be able to store something a little bit bulkier like a sunglasses case, charger, headphones. And so I like the simplicity of the Patagonia pocket, whereas on Air's bag you have a little bit more of a tech focused and premium experience. So you have the zipper garage here, the locking YKK zipper, but more importantly on the inside, you have the soft lining to help prevent against scratching. The compartment is also a little bit thicker, so it almost feels like it has some padding to it. With both of these, you do have the compartment coming into the main area of the bag, so it'll take up some volume, which is something to keep in mind. But, you know, really enjoy using both of them. It just depends on, you know, your specific items that you're carrying with you, which one might be best for you. It feels like the Mini MLC might have slightly more space, or at least more flexibility, um, but yeah. For sensitive items, the Travel Pack 3 will be a little bit better. And then the layout of the Travel Pack 3 Small has an admin area on the front. It's almost like a secondary clamshell compartment. The zipper comes down quite a bit here and the compartment goes all the way to the bottom. So you can use it to hold some pouches, a jacket, but beyond that, you also have some good built-in organization. So a couple of slip pockets here for your tech items slot for your pen, a couple more slip pockets for you know, your mouse, portable hard drive, all the things that I typically feature in my videos. You have a larger slip pocket on the back for magazine, a book, and then a zippered pocket for anything small. So lots of little organizations sprinkled in there. The Mini MLC has some similar options, but they're integrated into the laptop area. So both of them have a dedicated laptop compartment. I'll take a look at the Mini MLC first. It has this sort of travel style laptop compartment that I'm not always that crazy about, that it opens fully flat. But before jumping into that, just wanted to showcase kind of the equivalent of this, this admin area. So you have the zippered pocket on the bottom, a couple of nice elastic slip pockets. This mesh feels really good here. Some pockets for a pen, stylus, slip pocket for a mouse, other tech items, and then little clip with a carabiner. So trying to offer pretty similar benefits there. And then in this area, the Mini MLC has the laptop sleeve, which you know is a pretty good implementation. You have a dedicated tablet sleeve that offers a pretty good amount of padding. It's not just a slip pocket, which I really like. And then the laptop area, which will be able to hold 15 inch laptop pretty comfortably. Good amount of padding here. And I like that both of these are suspended off the bottom of the ground to give you a little bit more peace of mind when you're placing your bag down. Coming back to the laptop compartment on the Travel Pack 3, you have a dedicated laptop area as well. And this one is just a top loading compartment. I like that the zipper is aqua guarded, so you have just a little bit more protection from the elements. And then, you know, very well padded sleeve, definitely feels a little more premium and protective than the Patagonia bag. So on the back, you have this really soft lining. This one is also pulled up off the bottom of the ground. The sleeve itself has a pretty similar amount of padding, but just the back is where you feel a pretty big difference. You don't have a dedicated tablet sleeve, so that's something to keep in mind and an area where the Mini MLC has a little bit of an edge. But in this tech compartment, you do have a nice zippered area at the top. So giving you some additional storage for your laptop charger, mouse, 
something like that. So both of them, you know, well implemented, feels like your devices are gonna be protected. And then taking a look at the main areas, both of these have clamshell style opening, which is always great for easier packing, whether you're using it as a daily bag or as a travel bag. One thing to note is that the travel packs zippers do have the ability to lock. So they have the little loops so you can place a variety of locks there to give you some additional protection from pickpockets while you're on the go. Then I'll go ahead and open that up. And then here you get a nice sense of the volume of their main compartments. As a reminder, the mini MLC comes in at 30 liters, the travel pack three small, 28 liters. And uh, right now I have the mini MLC loaded out for daily, daily use and the travel setup that I most commonly use in the travel pack three small. Before I start getting into the loadouts, again, reminder that the quick access pockets eat into these main areas. So if I fill these out, it's something I just kind of have to contend with on both of the bags, but it's never really been a huge issue as long as I'm kind of accounting for it as I'm laying everything out. And you can see here that with my travel setup on the travel pack three, it's you know pretty full. There's not a lot of leftover space in this area. There's still the ability to use the other compartments of the bag that we've looked at, but uh, you know this is kind of filled to the to the capacity. Maybe a little bit of room here for another pouch or a jacket if I wanted to toss it in, but it would start to feel a little bit tight. Um, but still able to fit my shoes, my typical dop kit and then i have the small compressible packing cube from peak design and the large one so no issues kind of handling what i would normally want to use it for and then on the inside here no compression straps or much additional sort of complications or functionality the only other thing you have here is a little zippered pocket for anything more sensitive that you're not going to be accessing maybe as regularly i don't typically use that too much and then with the mini MLC, I have the you know typical EDC loadout with a lot of pouches. You know, I'm a big fan of the modular organization, and all of this will easily fit into the Travel Pack Three Small. So I have my packable rain jacket, I have my Air Tech pouch, I have my Beat Studio headphones, my two Evergoods pouches. Cap One fits in there. Cap Two fits, and then I have Cap half liter, so I have the three Evergoods pouches now. And then I also have an alpaca admin pouch. I might not have all of these specifically in this main area, but it can hold them comfortably and there's still some leftover capacity, maybe not quite as much as what we saw on the mini MLC. So, you know, very simple open space here. One thing that I have tucked away is this little mesh zipper divider. It's a little pocket on the bottom, so you can store it if you wanna use this as a daily bag, because that's not really as useful for day to day. But once you're turning this into a travel bag, especially if you're not using packing cubes, this is gonna be helpful for just kind of keeping everything secure. But I'll go ahead and toss in the same packing loadout that I had in the air bag. So here I have the larger compressible packing cube. Then I have the smaller packing cube. Those fit in there very easily plenty of leftover space. Then I have my shoes and I have my dop kit. And then you can see that it's still not feeling overly stuffed. I can zip this up comfortably. If I had this more packed out, this would help kind of compress things down. And then because it's a mesh, you can still see. And so it's nice to have that, that separation and the 30 liters of space can just hold an impressive amount and just mold around everything that's on the inside, which I'm a big fan of. And so, yeah, really just versatile space in those. And moving into the, the lids, there's additional pocketing for both of them. And I really like how Patagonia implemented this here because the compartments have their own sort of independent volume comes outwards. So you still have the capacity to use this for some pouches or larger items or even as a secondary packing cube. And you have one that doesn't have any mesh and then one that has mesh. And both of them have a similar kind of ability to give you some extra space. And then one thing to note about the orientation here, because they're vertically oriented, if you're using this as a briefcase or a shoulder bag, you do have the ability to easily access those pockets if you want to. So pretty good thoughtful design there. And then on the Travel Pack 3 Small, you have 
a nice zippered mesh compartment with this kind of premium elastic mesh that Air uses on a lot of their bags. And you have this tall compartment here, a tall zippered pocket, which might be a good spot for maybe a shirt, jacket, anything that you're trying to separate out from the main area. I don't use this too, too much, but it's nice that because it extends kind of the full height here, it feels like it offers some, some good flexibility. So, you know, really like the layout on these pockets. It's pretty standard, you know, it's, it's a useful layout. It doesn't impede my ability to pack in the way that I want to, and then it's there if I need it. So, you know, really like the, the layout of both of the bags. And so as far as which might be best for you, uh, some of the things that I would keep in mind is uh, first off the sizing. So if you want something that's gonna be a little bit larger then the mini MLC will be uh, the way to go. Also because of the simpler layout, the flexibility, it just feels like you can hold more in general. It's also gonna be a little more lightweight feeling. It's not just bulky or it doesn't have as much padding. And so that always, to me feels beneficial for a travel bag where you're really trying to get the most out of your weight and space. So I think that in general, the mini MLC is the one I would gravitate towards more for travel focused use. It can work as an EDC, whereas the Travel Pack 3 Small can work as a minimal travel bag. It can hold everything that I need, but it feels a little more usable as an EDC bag with the layout that it has. And it's also just gonna be the more comfortable and durable feeling option. Now that comes at the expense of some additional weight and bulk, but you know, if comfort and durability are the highest priority, then that's gonna be something to keep in mind. And if you want additional organizational options, if you don't have as many pouches or you just like having kind of a spot for everything throughout your bag, the Travel Pack 3 is also gonna provide some benefits there. And it's gonna come in maybe at a slightly higher price point. So you do get a good bit of value for the extra price on the Travel Pack 3, but if you wanna save a little bit of money, then the Mini MLC will also give you that flexibility. So both of them are gonna be fantastic. Regardless of which one you go with, you're getting an excellent bag. Those are just some of the things that might you know, help you decide one way or the other. And so that's it. Those are some of the similarities and differences between the Patagonia Mini MLC and the Air Travel Pack 3 Small. Hopefully this video was helpful, and if you have any questions on anything that we covered in the video or suggestions for similar bags that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I'll make sure to include links in the description below to the dedicated reviews that I've done for each of these bags, as well as to some of the recent comparison videos that I've done that feature these bags, as well as awesome bags like the Evergood CTB26 and the Alpha 19 or Evade 1.5 Full. I'll also include links to some of the roundup videos that I've done where I talk about my favorite tech and EDC backpacks of the past year and some of my favorite travel bags. And if you have any ideas for other comparison or roundup videos that you would like to see, definitely let me know about those as well. And as always, I wanna thank you for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.